As of this recording, it's actually not a great day to talk about positively about space. I get this, okay? If the stock is down 11% as of Tuesday and another 4% as of yesterday when I record this video, well, some people say you are crazy, but I'm, and I'm not crazy, guys. I am just an early space investor and I know that uh, volatility is part of the game. So welcome to a brand new video and today we are talking about that everyone, including me, are valuing space and Virgin Galactic totally wrong. I will show you now a video of one of my favorite podcasts, not because there is Shamas Palihapitiya, who is the chairman of the board of Virgin Galactic and part of the four besties, just because I think that this podcast has a tremendous value of knowledge experience into the investment field. And also, if you're interested, also in the VC world, and in the political world from a US standpoint. Okay, so very interesting podcast. I think every Friday they, they release a new episode. It's called the All In Podcast. Well, they talk sometimes about, you know, these things and sometimes Virgin Galactic is part of that. So listen to what they have to say about Virgin Galactic mm -hmm. as a deep tech company. Elon only self-funded the first couple hundred million of these companies. He delivered revenue very early on. You remember at Tesla, he first developed the sports car, right. the Roadster, and that was real For revenue. For was... $150,000, he sold 100 in advance, not dissimilar to uh, Virgin Galactic's playbook. Right. And I'll maybe that's down. an important lesson, right? Like in deep tech, uh, you can't just say I'm going from zero to one with billions of dollars over decades. You know, that that's a government funded program. Well, or um, or you can if it's your own and that's what say, that's what Branson did. That's what Be Ed Bezos. When I showed up, Richard had spent 1.1 1 .1 or 1 1.2 billion of his own money. And I thought, I mean, at at some skin point skin in the game. It's that's that skin in the game. I mean, Bezos has been funding So as you can see, there's a couple of things that we need to dive into, okay? First, Virgin Galactic is definitely a deep tech company. What is a deep tech company? A deep tech company is usually solving a very technical hard problem and therefore getting a first mover advantage, have a very hard, very, very hard entry barriers for upcoming startups or companies that want to come in as competition and third, building even new markets, okay? So let's talk about Virgin Galactic. Yes, we having a very innovative product that will send people to space, all right? It's already sending people to space. So actually we not have only the deep tech company, but also a proof of concept. And we are very close a couple of months before we going into real commercial operations, okay? Second, yes, the entry barriers are very, very hard. Think about this way. Virgin Galactic was actually founded 2004, 18 years ago. And if you're taking a company like, for example, Blue Origin, that took even more years, four more years, so 22 years to come where are they now, and on the way approximately spent between, uh, you know, in the beginning half a billion to one billion dollars per year, you can easily say that building such a company would at least take a fresh new billionaire that want to enter the space industry one billion dollars per year, maybe he makes it in 10 years, maybe he makes it in 20 years, but on average, let's say even when he's fast and get the advantage of the second mover, because second movers has obviously advantages because the technology going forward and it's not that hard anymore because there is some concept that shows what's possible. So if you consider all that, I think at a pretty much you know, kind of way to say, okay, if a new company comes, they need at least to spend $10 billion, okay? So building such a company is costing you $10 billion in 2022, full stop. This is one way to value Virgin Galactic. A second value is that, you know, usually those companies, as you heard in the video, are getting you know their product out as a concept and getting already revenue 
in, in Tesla's case, you know, they, they pre-sold many Tesla Model S and showed customers, showed investors, show the market that there is really audience for this product and Virgin Galactic did the same. They actually gathered 80 million dollars in revenue for the upcoming product years before they you know finally can offer that product which is fantastic right this is showing you just the immense potential that is that is there. And the third thing we talked about is obviously for this kind of you know, companies that are coming out of nothing, they create new markets, which means that there's no companies doing that right now. And there is a new market filled with brand new customers, okay? So before, there was a pretty low market on going into space, basically zero. Their only option was to spend, I think, 40 to $60 million and go with the Russians and go through a heavy, a astronaut program go on a very explosive rocket and then go up to space and come back and hopefully for you you speak rush in another case it's basically a brand new market now three companies pay basically can offer that as of this moment and still don't offer it officially right blue origin is still not offering it virgin galactic still not offering but will start commercial operation in 2022 q3 and uh, SpaceX don't offer that as well to purchase a ticket to go up to space. So basically, it's still, even though the companies are almost ready, it's still not existing, but the demand is fantastic and huge. So if you value the overall market to go into space, you know, the overall expectations by GP Morgan, for example, they said that they expect, in addition to the 600 or 900 interested people that are already going or want to go to space with Virgin Galactic, there will be additional 1,100 people, okay? They don't define when, you know, how long, but let's take this as an example, okay? Let's say that we have the 600 customers already, plus the 300 additional that uh, made a deposit of just $1,000, you know, the program that uh, Virgin Galactic had for a couple of months, plus the 1,100 potential clients that GP Morgan is estimating, you have about 2,000 people times the average price of four hundred and fifty thousand dollars which is one billion dollars and as you can see this is nine hundred million dollars of market opportunity just for virgin galactic now if you're thinking that let's say over the next couple of years you know let's say divided by I would say they will they will at some point will be able maybe in 3 years be able to harvest let's say due to technical advances and the fleet expansions to harvest let's say one fourth of that in one year okay so this divided to you know or times 0 to 5 which is a force of that, this is the annual revenue and the current, let's say, valuations in this very early adopters in this very close market by 180. So you have here a valuation of around $40 billion. So $40 billion as a valuation in a couple of years, maybe in four years or three years, okay? So that means the valuation should at some point closely build up to this, you know, four year, $40 billion valuation. So that means that maybe, you know, Virgin Galactic should be worth now 10 billion, you know, and then next year 20 billion and next year 30 billion and then, you know, 40 billion. So those are the hints and kind of numbers that you can play. And therefore I'm saying, I think, you know, to take things like PE, PS for deep tech companies is so wrong. 
is so, so wrong. And that's why I think this should be a kind of valuation model. Now, I will look into this obviously very, very much uh, into detail. I will look into how VCs are looking into valuation models when they are talking about deep tech companies. I will look into, you know, how other uh, examples of the early internet was valued, of the early, you know, e-cars very well used for example tesla building this brand new market of electric mass vehicles are totally different valued than for example a daimler or a mercedes is valued or an other company for the car industry like volkswagen for example so you cannot let's say take the valuation of uh, a boeing right the classic aero company and compare it to a space company, right? I hope you agree. If you agree, then smash that subscribe button and, and, and hit the like button. This would be highly appreciated. So I hope you understand the big picture here. Totally different valuations for a brand new market with high barrier entries and very, very, very less competition, if any at all, right? Uh, I like this kind of setup. So I'm still investing into space specifically on those red days. You can follow all my trades in my Discord, all the links below, and I hope to see you tomorrow again.